I'm a lit kid B. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. Five, four, three, two, one, blast and last and on. Going out of space like an astronaut. astronaut. Five, four, three, two, one, blast and last and on. Going out of space like an astronaut. astronaut. Galaxy, stars, and planets oh, wow. of the universe. Want to go to space just like I am, Blue Fur. Who is Guy and Blue Fur, you ask? Who is that? The first African American to put on a space mask. Whoa. 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 That's right. That's right. If you believe it, then it can't come, come true. true. Can't come true. Use your imagination. Hold tight. Hold tight. You can't do anything you put your mind to. Put your mind to. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast an astronaut. Going out of space like an astronaut. astronaut. Five, four, three, two, one. Blast an astronaut. Going out of space like an astronaut. astronaut. Just because it's hard don't mean it. You should give up. When you never quit, the only way is up. Just because it's hard don't mean it, you should give up. When you never quit, the only way is up. Hi, welcome to National Astronaut Day. We have a terrific group that's come together to bring this program to you. Um, Mommy on the Move, Great Lakes Science Center, NASA Glenn Research Center, Maximum Velocity, Kia Montrose, and big special thanks to Lawrence Sharp. Today, we are celebrating National Astronaut Day, honoring the 60th anniversary of Alan Shepard's historic launch in 1961 to become the first American in space. Today, we'll talk with trailblazers who have reached for the stars, and we will read stories that inspire us to dream big. Joining us to start our celebration are Tierra Haynes, author of The Adventures of Us, Getting to Know Dr. Guion Bluford Jr., and Dr. Julian Earls, physicist, former director of NASA Glenn Research Center, and most recently executive at Cleveland State University. We have students from North Ridgeville City Schools to ask questions, and then we are celebrating with Doug Wheelock, engineer, aviator, army officer, and astronaut. Let me turn it over to you, Tierra Haynes. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, I am Tiara Haynes, author of The Adventures of Us, Getting to Know Gian, Dr. Guy, Guy Gian Ju Bluford Jr. <laughs> um, this book was inspired by my children. Um, those are my three boys on the cover of the book there. And their um, inspiration to and to uh, imagine themselves in different positions and to celebrate the accomplishments of the first African-American to enter space, which is Dr. Guion uh, Bluford Jr. I hope you all enjoy the reading today and thank you so much to our special, to our other special reader, um, Dr. Julian uh, Earls, that will be joining as well today. So thank you so much, I hope you enjoy. Good morning, it's a pleasure to join you and uh, just give me my marching orders as to when I should start reading the book. I think we're ready for you to read. Thank you for much, so much for being with us. My pleasure. One afternoon, Dre, Devin and Dallas were waiting for their mom to make lunch. Mom, we are so hungry. Is lunch ready yet? Devin asked. Lunch will be ready soon, boys, mom said. Let's play video games until it's time to eat, Dre suggested. Let's give the video games a break, Dad said. Play outside, guys. It's a beautiful day. Enjoy some fresh air. Please, Dad, the boys pleaded in unison. This isn't up for debate. Go outside and play, have fun, Dad instructed, as the boys trudged outside. What should we do, Dre wondered aloud. I know, he finally said, let's play basketball. How about we jump on the trampoline, Devin suggested. I want to play astronauts, Dallas said. Dallas, why do you always want to play astronauts, asked Devin. Because when I grow up, I want to be just like my favorite astronaut, Guyon Bluford Jr., replied Dallas. You want to be like who? Who is Guyon Bluford Jr.? Devin and Dre asked in confusion. 
you guys don't listen to mom at all. She taught us all about him. Guy and Bluford Jr. was the first African-American to travel into space, and he served as a mission specialist aboard the Challenger. You know, the famous space shuttle. He's my hero, said Dallas. Oh, I kind of remember. That wasn't Guyon an Air Force pilot in Vietnam, too? Dallas nodded with excitement. Yep, that's him. Guys, let's play rock, paper, scissors. The winner gets to pick what we do, Dre suggested. The three boys bunched up their heads, ready to play. Dallas won as his rock crushed his brother's scissors. I win, Dallas cheered. Grab your helmet, guys. We are going into outer space. Dragging their feet, Dre and Devon grabbed their helmets, picking up cardboard boxes to place on their heads. I'm going to be an astronaut someday, Dallas smiled. Are you sure about that, Devon asked? For sure, Dallas said. Just watch. Three, two, one, blast off. Within seconds, the three boys blasted off into outer space. Dre, Devon, and Dallas landed on the moon and looked around in amazement. Now dressed in their spaceships and official astronaut helmets, the boys were prepared and ready to explore. See, aren't you guys glad that we came to the moon? This is so cool, Dallas cheered. This is beyond cool, Dre happily agreed. We're walking on the moon, he said, as he bounced around. I never imagined doing something like this. Hello, you three must be our new class of recruits, a man said, appearing from behind a crater. Yep, that's us. But wait, aren't you Guyon Bluefoot Jr.? Dallas asked in amazement. That's right, but you can call me Guy. Today, I'll be teaching you everything you need to know to become an astronaut. Let's get to work and begin your official astronaut training, Guyon said as he led the boys to the training center. Dallas was in awe of Guyon. I can't believe we're training with Guyon Bluford Jr., Dallas whispered to Dre. He's a legend. He's been inducted into the International Space Hall of Fame, the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame, and the National Aviation Hall of Fame. He's like the Michael Jordan of astronauts. Gon chuckled modestly. Thank you for that glowing introduction, Dallas. Becoming an astronaut takes a lot of hard work and dedication. But if you put your minds to it, you three can achieve anything, Gion said. For example, to prepare for my first night launch, we had to switch our circadian rhythm, Gion explained. What's circadian rhythm, Dre asked. It means we had to get used to sleeping in the day and being up at night, Guyon explained. But why, Devin chimed in. Well, during the night of our launch, we had to wake up at 10 o'clock. We ate breakfast and suited up. Sleeping during the day and staying up at night guaranteed our bodies were prepared to be alert and aware during the shuttle mission. We put our minds to it and we went for it, even though the adjustment was kind of weird. Training the boys, Training the boys teaching, teaching them challenging, challenging astronaut, astronaut duties, duties, such as, such as space walking and operating, and operating the space, space system. system. Dallas yeah. began to struggle with learning to operate the space system, and he started to become frustrated. He threw his arms in the air, ready to quit. Come on, Dallas, you can do it. You've got this, Devin and Dre encouraged. No, I can't do this, Dallas cried. Being an astronaut is too hard. Who was I kidding? I'll never be able to spacewalk. I should just quit so I don't keep embarrassing myself. Dallas, we won't let you quit, Dre said, putting his hand on his brother's shoulders. We're brothers and we're going to stick together to get this done. What's our family motto? Even through fear, we persevere, the boys shouted in unison. You're right. Thanks for reminding me to believe in myself. Let's do this, Dallas said as he perked up and rejoined training. 
The boys finished their astronaut training and Guyon rewarded their hard work and determination with a badge of completion. I'm so proud of you, Guyon said, and you should be proud of yourselves too. It's always great to see a group complete their training, but it's even better to see you work together to succeed. Brothers are your first best friends. And even though you won't always get along, you should always stick together. After all, look at what you've accomplished today. I have to admit, I thought training to become an astronaut would be too challenging. And even though it was hard, this showed me I could do anything. I'm so glad we did this together, Dre said, grinning from ear to ear. When we work together, we can do anything, Devin exclaimed. That's right, Guyon agreed. Being an astronaut is extremely hard work, but don't ever let difficulties discourage you from trying. Being an astronaut has given me a new appreciation for the Earth. Our planet is a small ball in a large universe. I didn't recognize that until I saw the Earth from afar. Being an astronaut is a labor of love. And once you travel two million miles into space, you want to stay up there forever, Guyon added. What was it like when the spaceship took off? Was it scary, Devin asked. It felt like exactly like these simul simulators, except you're really moving. I laughed all the way up. It was such a fun ride. We flew into orbit upside down. It was spectacular, Guyon explained. The boys listened in amazement, hanging on to every word of Guyon's cool story. Thank you for teaching us how to be astronauts. I can't wait to come back, Dallas said. Never stop using your imagination, Guyon instructed. There are so many things you can do to continue your work as astronauts. Build airplanes, do crosswords and puzzles, and of course, the most important thing is to earn good grades in school. Mom and dad always tell us to study hard. I guess they were right, Devin said. The boys arrived home safely, planting their feet on the ground and looking around at their house. They gave each other a high five, feeling overjoyed about their awesome experience into outer space. Hi boys, mom said as she approached her three sons. Dallas, your shoe is untied, mom said, pointing at his laces. Dallas leaned down to tie his shoe, but struggled to finish. Instead of quitting, he looked at his mom and said, I won't let difficulties discourage me from trying. That's a great lesson, Dallas, dad happily exclaimed in surprise. Dallas smiled. I learned it from my astronaut training today, he said, walking off to join his brothers on the trampoline. Astronaut training? Mom confusedly wondered, shrugging her shoulders. All right, so we have some questions from Mrs. Knopf's third grade class in North Ridgeville, um, in the North Ridgeville Academic Center. So I believe our first question is from Ella. Hello. Hi, Ella. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, my question is, if you could ever bring someone to space, who would you bring? I think that question is for me. Is that right? <laughs> yes, thanks. Okay. So my answer is I would bring Beyonce because I think it would be really fun to see her do a concert from the moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> and pretty much everywhere I go would like to bring Beyonce with me. That's really my answer. <laughs> All right, Ella, did you have another question? No. Oh, no. I, th I think we have one more question or is that the same question for that? Okay. We have one more question. He, uh, he, he couldn't be here to ask his question, but I have his oh. question written down. Um, okay. It's Max Willis. And great job, Ella. Good job. Sorry, we're Thank really you. excited to be here. <laughs> we love this. Um, his question is, what do astronauts use to build the giant fire that helps the rocket ships fly? I'll, I'll take that I'm one. guessing that's question yeah, I think two. that one's for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, what we have is we have a partnership with companies like Boeing and the private sector, and we design the rockets ourselves. So the launch vehicles, the propulsion systems are designed. In fact, Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio, has been one of the primary centers to design the propulsion system that is used 
for the launches. And then we do the rocket testing at other centers down in Mashu in Mississippi. We do some rocket testing there because to test those rockets, you really need an isolated spot where you don't have to worry about public being there and the noise being generated. So the design is done within the NASA centers and they are built by the private sector. Very cool. He'll be so excited that you answered his question. Thank you so Great much. Question. <laughs> Thank you both so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Tara. Thank you, Julian. Uh, you're making our Astronaut Day celebration so special. We are going to transition now uh, to talk to Doug Wheelock. So if everybody holds on one moment, um, we'll bring out our next speaker. Thank you again. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kirsten Ellenbogen. I'm president and CEO of Great Lakes Science Center in Cleveland, Ohio. And it is my great honor to introduce astronaut Doug Wheelock. He has flown in space twice, logging 178 days. And during his second flight in space, he became the first Army officer to command the International Space Station. And he became the first person to check in in space on Foursquare. In 2019, Colonel Wheelock worked at the Glenn Research Center in Plumbrook, the Plumbrook Station, just outside Sandusky. He was working there to test the Orion spacecraft that'll take humans farther into space than they have ever gone before. He's currently working on NASA's human landing system, working with their commercial partners to safely carry astronauts to the surface of the moon and back. Now, I am delighted to say happy Astronauts Day and happy birthday to you. Thank you so much, Kirsten. I appreciate that. Happy Cinco de Mayo as well for those who celebrate. So um, it's it's really uh, great to join you and. Um, uh, and to celebrate this Astronauts Day uh, for all those that have that have dream, ever dreamed about uh, exploring the stars and exploring space, and so happy Astronauts Day to everyone. Well, so let's let's start with that. You know, those who dream about exploring space, let's uh, fitting for your birthday to look back a bit to your childhood. Um, how old were you when you decided you wanted to be an astronaut? So well, we're not supposed to talk about age, right? <laughs> it's funny because uh, everybody calls me wheels at NASA. And now all the younger, I can't even say younger, I, the early career astronauts call me Papa Wheels now. So I was fortunate enough to, to kind of span the Apollo missions. And it was I was a little boy um, in going, I was in third grade, actually, when uh, we landed Apollo 11 on the moon. And so it was a huge turning point for me. And um, I came from a very small town in upstate New York on the west side of the Catskills, kind of a rural community farming, a lot of farms and apple orchards and dairy farms. And so we were from a very small place and a small school. And um, my first inkling of, uh, of course, everyone wanted to be an astronaut when we saw people walking on the moon, but but I, I watched that event and I thought to myself, wow, what what it would feel like to be a superhuman, extraordinary person, you know, to, to be able to explore space and walk on the moon. And I remember going into class that next, uh, that was in the summer, of course, and we went into class, I think we started the early, early part of August that year, and we had a brand new teacher. And so the first person that really believed in my dream of becoming an astronaut was a teacher. And I went in, her name was Christine West. It was her first year of teaching. And um, she came to a, our little school uh, from the big city of Albany, New York, the capital of New York. And she came in and she said, uh, it was her first day teaching, of course. And uh, she said, who saw the moon landing? Of course, I raised my hand. And um, she said, one day you could do that too. Oh. We all thought, this woman is crazy. She has no <laughs> idea where she is in this tiny little place, this tiny little school. Uh, you know, nothing really extraordinary ever came out of this little town, you know. But what I didn't realize at the time, uh, it was a lesson I learned years later from Neil Armstrong, by the way, um, that I always felt like I was uh, something like this, achieving or something like this or participating even in space exploration was something sort of extraordinary and out of my reach as a young boy from this small town. 
And then I, uh, I had a little life lesson with Neil Armstrong when I asked him about, you know, how he felt as, you know, standing on the moon and he could put, stick his thumb out and cover up all of, all of the earth from the lunar surface, you know. And um, he said, you know, I wondered to myself, how does an ordinary little boy from Wapakoneta, Ohio, end up standing on the moon? And I thought like, wait a second, that's the same lesson that my teacher way back in elementary school, Christine West, taught me. It's like, we're really all just ordinary kids from ordinary places with these extraordinary dreams for our lives, what we want to achieve, the places we want to go, the things we want to do. And so it's all like inside, you know, all of this, you know, to prepare your life to intersect with the extraordinary opportunities. And so it was a life lesson that I, I'm ashamed to admit, it took me a long time to figure out. And, uh, and so now my, my aim is to is to take this very message to kids of all ages. You know, it's like, it's like we're all just ordinary kids from ordinary places looking for our lives to intersect with the extraordinary. And so, and of course, NASA is very good about providing to us, uh, redefining what's possible, you know, in the, in this uh, ordinary world that we can accomplish extraordinary things. So. I love that. Well, and I and I so appreciate you talking about your teacher. And and I know we have a lot of teachers with us for Astronaut Day, um, but you've also talked about some of the newest generation of astronauts. Can you reflect just a little bit on the kind of pathways you're seeing them take? You said NASA's so good about you know making these things possible. What are those pathways you're seeing for the latest generation of astronauts? The latest is I'm really glad that I was selected when I when I was. I, I feel like you know I'm 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 trying to I'm trying to run at a sprint to keep up with this digital world that we're in. You know, because I I kind of like bridge that gap between sort of the analog and then when I was in school, high school is when computers started first coming out. And then I remember uh, when we were developing the space shuttle in the 70s, and I thought to myself wow, a spaceship with wings, maybe my dream was to fly. I didn't think I could ever explore space. And so I thought like, I'm going to set my dream a little bit lower because I don't think I can get there. Miss West thinks I can, but uh, my teachers think I can, but but I just wanted to fly. And so, and then I saw a spaceship with wings and I thought to myself, wow, what an amazing world we live in, you know? So so in that in that time, and of course the space shuttle like in, inspired a generation and a half or two generations of, of scientists and engineers and test pilots and, and all different uh, areas of the STEM fields, uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. And I think this, this new wave that we have coming with Artemis going back to the moon and now our, our, our telescope tightening the focus on Mars, um, and you saw our new we have a helicopter on Mars now, you know, so, right. which I think to myself, I think to myself, you know, when, when I was a kid, we, we always had the saying, you know, when you're, you, you were given a simple task and you, you didn't get around to it or something. It's like, you know, we could put a human on the moon, but we can't do and then fill in the blank, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so now we could say, and this generation can say like, you know, we've got a helicopter on Mars, but we can't, you know, fill in the blank. And so, so I think it's more, um, uh, it is a different environment now for kids, uh, young people, students of all ages that are that are sort of channeling into these into the STEM field now because now we're making it really steam. We're we're injecting the arts into this whole um, concept of because we're trying to we're trying to get a person uh, or a crew. We're trying to build a crew that's so well rounded that they're that they've got a great balance between between the logic and the impulse, you know, so, mm. so and which, which are critical skills for any test pilot or what have you, but, but um, having a good balance between logic and impulse is, uh, is really critical. And, um, and so the, the young people I see now coming in as early career astronauts and, and those working at NASA in all this STEM fields and uh, to prepare our rockets and actually the arts and graphic design and, cockpit layout and hand controllers, uh, human factors uh, for hand controllers. So that's where we're infusing the arts into our, into our uh, engineer built, uh, you know, rockets and things like that. So now we're making it actually a pleasure to fly and, uh, and very, very intuitive because 
because now we're incorporating it, the, how ac people actually think and solve problems and think on their feet. And so um, it's, it's a very exciting time. And I'm trying to keep pace with these younger uh, early career astronauts now to try to, uh, to try to learn from them. And so I, I do see them tracking, tracking in the similar type STEM fields, but now we're seeing a lot of we're seeing uh, psychology, like um, human factors psycho in uh, human performance uh, in in psychology and in physiology, kind of fusing into the into the STEM fields now because they're really they're inseparable. They kind kind of go hand in hand, and so um, so we're seeing a broader spectrum of of uh, of talent and skill sets coming in. So. Oh, I love that. Well, and, and if you look back, right, today's astronaut day, um, we're looking back at the remarkable first human space flight for an American of Alan Shepard. Um, your experiences in space were around 50 years later. And now you've worked on Orion, um, the spacecraft that will land the first woman and the first person of color on the moon. And eventually, our, our efforts to take humans to Mars. So how, when you think about that timeline from Shepard to you, you know, now to the Artemis program, um, how has the experience of what it is to be an astronaut changed? It, it's really, it's really amazing to watch uh, in, in my own personal development. I found that, um, uh, that be, being an astronaut is not a, being an astronaut is not a profession. It's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to uh, to help people learn this when they first come into the office. It was hard for me to learn because I showed up. I had my brand new blue flight suit. And I was like, "Where's my rocket? I'm ready to go." You know, and how? I mean, it took me nine years to get my first flight into space. And even then, when I strapped into that space shuttle, I thought like, "I wonder if I've studied enough. If I've learned enough about myself about." teamwork about um, all these different facets of exploring space I became I I sort of fell into the background to sort of like with my own thinking about my skills and myself and and how to how to develop into a into a more of a team concept and so that's that's really hard for some of us to learn because it's uh, uh, so I I, uh, I, it, I we've really developed now into uh, so being an astronaut is is a skill set, you know, yeah. and we we pull people with different career paths, and um, and when then we place them together in a crew uh, makeup, and then we expect them to, you know, we tell them what the task is, and then it's incumbent upon us. What I'm doing now is, if we're going to require somebody to do a task in space or on the lunar surface, or on on their way to Mars or on the surface of Mars, we are we have the solemn obligation to help them master those tasks. And so we have to do everything we can to help them master that task. And some of these things are things we're doing for the first time. And so, so this helicopter on Mars that we saw, there's a method to our madness. I mean, it's like one day we envision having flying craft and having people and having science platforms on the surface of Mars, which seems you know, I'm hoping in the next 50 years, hopefully in my lifetime, we see people walking on, on Mars and it's going to be very, very exciting. And it's probably uh, one of our kids, some uh, one of our children in our classrooms today. You know, so I was selected when I was in my 30s as an astronaut. Normally we select astronauts um, sort of like mid 30s. And so that means if we really see ourselves walking on Mars in 20 years, 25 years, even if it's 30 years from now, that means those kids are somewhere in our classrooms, you know, somewhere between, you know, uh, the ages of five and 20, probably somewhere in there uh, are our first Martian walkers, you know, the first people to walk on Mars. And I'm thinking to myself, and I, I think about that every time I talk to our children, every time I've been in the classroom, it's like, I wonder if that first person on Mars is somewhere in this audience, you know? And so we take that very seriously at NASA and that's really part of our mission. We're trying to, we're trying to inspire those people that are going to be those Martian explorers. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Papa wheels will probably be a little bit too old, but I, I hope to be in a rocking chair somewhere with a, with a glass of tea or something watching our first Martian walkers, you know? So uh, we're very excited about that. Oh, that's so inspiring.
Well, I know that I'm not the only one that's going to want to continue to follow your inspirational work um, and all of your thoughtful perspective you bring to this. If you want to keep watching Doug's exciting work, you can find him on Instagram or on Twitter as astro underscore wheels. Um, and of course, you can find more of Great Lake Science Center's programs like this on our YouTube channel or on our website, greatscience.com. Thank you for joining us for Astronauts Day.